Hello fellows, welcome to my new video. Let's start with the topic application of machine learning. There are image recognition, speech recognition, traffic prediction, product recommendations, self-driving cars, email spam and malware filtering, virtual personal assistant, online fraud detection, stock market trading, medical diagnosis, automatic language translation. What is up, guys? Welcome to the first tutorial in our image recognition course. This is also the very first topic and is just going to provide a general intro into image recognition. Now we're going to cover two topics specifically here. One will be, what is image recognition, and the other will be, what tools can help us to solve image recognition. The first part, which will be this video, will be all about introducing the problem of image recognition, talking about how we solve the problem of image recognition in our day-to-day -day lives, and then we'll go on to explore this from a machine's point of view. After that, we'll talk about the tools specifically that machines use to help with image recognition. Specifically, we'll be looking at convolutional neural networks, but a bit more on that later. Let's get started with, what is image recognition? Image recognition is seeing an object or an image of that object and knowing exactly what it is. At the very least, even if we don't know exactly what it is, we should have a general sense of what it is based on similar items that we've seen. Essentially, we class everything that we see into certain categories based on a set of attributes. That's why image recognition is often called image classification, because it essentially groups everything that we see into some sort of a category. Now the attributes that we use to classify images are entirely up to us. For example, if we're looking at different animals, we might use a different set of attributes versus if we're looking at buildings or let's say cars, example. If we're looking at vehicles, we might be taking a look at the shape of the vehicle, the number of windows, the number of wheels, etc. If we're looking at animals, we might take into consideration the fur or the skin type, the number of legs, the general head structure, and stuff like that. It's entirely up to us which attributes we choose to classify items. And these could be real-world items as well, not necessarily just images. Now, this allows us to categorize something that we haven't even seen before. This is very powerful. We can take a look at something that we've never seen in our lives, and accurately place it in some sort of a category. We can often see this with animals. I highly doubt that everyone has seen every single type of animal there is to see out there. No doubt there are some animals that you've never seen before in your life. But, you should, by looking at it, be able to place it into some sort of category. You should know that it's an animal. You should have a general sense of whether it's a carnivore, omnivore, herbivore, and so on. Now, another example of this is models of cars. Now, every single year, there are brand new models of cars coming out, some of which we've never seen before. Some look so different from what we've seen before, but we recognize that they are all cars. We can take a look again at the wheels of the car, the hood, the windshield, the number of seats, etc., and just get a general sense that we are looking at some sort of a vehicle, even if it's not like a sedan, or a truck, or something like that. Now, how does this work for us? Well, a lot of the time, image recognition happens subconsciously. We rarely think about how we know what something is just by looking at it. We just kinda take a look at it, and we know instantly kind of what it is. And a big part of this is the fact that we don't necessarily acknowledge everything that is around us. If we do need to notice something, then we can usually pick it out and define and describe it. Take, for example, if you're walking down the street, especially if you're walking a route that you've walked many times. Likely, you don't pay attention to everything around you. Maybe there are stores on either side of you, and you might not even really think about what the stores look like, or what's in those stores. However, when you go to cross the street, you become acutely aware of the other people around you, of the cars around you, because those are things that you need to notice. Even if it's a street that we've never seen before, with cars and people that we've never seen before, we should have a general sense of what to do. The light turns green, we go, if there's a car driving in front of us, probably shouldn't walk into it, and so on. Now, this kind of process of knowing what something is is typically based on previous experiences. If we'd never come into contact with cars, people, or streets, we probably wouldn't know what to do. 
However, we've interacted with streets and cars and people, so we know the general procedure. So, go on a green light, stop at a red light, and so on, and that's because that's stuff that we've seen in the past. Even if we haven't seen that exact version of it, we kind of know what it is because we've seen something similar before. Now, sometimes this is done through pure memorization. Maybe we look at a specific object, or a specific image, over and over again, and we know to associate that with an answer. This is just kind of rote memorization. However, the more powerful ability is being able to deduce what an item is based on some similar characteristics, when we've never seen that item before. And that's the challenge. It's easy enough to program in exactly what the answer is given some kind of input into a machine. You could just use like a map or a dictionary for something like that. However, the challenge is in feeding it similar images and then having it look at other images that it's never seen before, and be able to accurately predict what that image is. Now, this kind of problem is twofold. The problem is first deducing that there are multiple objects in your field of vision, and the second is then recognizing each object. So, step number one, how are we going to recognize that there are different objects around us? Typically, we do this based on borders that are defined primarily by differences in color. This makes sense. If we've seen something that camouflages into something else, probably the colors are very similar, so it's just hard to tell them apart, and it's hard to place a border on one specific item. However, if you see, say, a skyscraper outlined against the sky, there's usually a color difference. It's very easy to see the skyscraper, maybe, let's say, brown, or black, or gray, and then the sky is blue. So there's that sharp contrast in color, therefore we can say, okay, there's something in front of the sky. Now, again, another example is it's easy to see a green leaf on a brown tree, but let's say we see a black cat against a black wall. We might not even be able to tell it's there at all, unless it opens its eyes, or maybe even moves. Now, we don't necessarily need to look at every single part of an image to know what some part of it is. Take, for example, if you have an image of a landscape, okay, so there's maybe some trees in the background, there's a house, there's a farm or something like that, and someone asks you to point out the house. Well, you don't even need to look at the entire image, it's just as soon as you see the bit with the house, you know that there's a house there, and then you can point it out. This is even more powerful when we don't even get to see the entire image of an object, but we still know what it is. Take, for example, an image of a face. Let's say we're only seeing a part of a face. Specifically, we only see, let's say, one eye and one ear. But we still know that we're looking at a person's face based on the color, the shape, the spacing of the eye and the ear, and just the general knowledge that a face, or at least a part of a face, looks kind of like that. Our brain fills in the rest of the gap, and says, well, we've seen faces, a part of a face is contained within this image, therefore we know that we're looking at a face. That's, again, a lot more difficult to program into a machine because it may have only seen images of full faces before, and so it gets a part of a face, and it doesn't know what to do. No longer are we looking at two eyes, two ears, the mouth, etc. We're only looking at a little bit of that. Now, before we talk about how machines process this, I'm just going to kind of summarize this section, we'll end it, and then we'll cover the machine part in a separate video, because I do want to keep things a bit shorter, there's a lot to process here. So some of the key takeaways are the fact that a lot of this kind of image recognition classification happens subconsciously. We just look at an image of something, and we know immediately what it is, or kind of what to look out for in that image. This gets a bit more complicated when a lot is going on in an image. Also, in image recognition, the problem of it is kinda twofold. The first is recognizing where one object ends and another begins, so kinda separating the object in an image, and then the second part is actually recognizing the individual pieces of an image, putting them together, and recognizing the whole thing. Also, know that it's very difficult for us to program, in the ability to recognize a whole part of something based on just seeing a single part of it, but it's something that we are naturally very good at. Okay, so, think about that stuff, stay tuned for the next section, which will kind of talk about how machines process images, and that'll give us insight into how we'll go about implementing the model. Okay, so thanks for watching, we'll see you guys in the next one.